right now because we cannot wait any longer to get started with this topic today. I am Shannon Gregg, and I am joined by my dear friend and yours, Elizabeth Rodriguez Dennehy, for what we think is the most critical and important topic that we have had in our entire Working Parent series. Today, we're going to be talking to expectant parents, expectant mothers. How are you going to deliver the message? What are people going to think of you in the workplace? Expectant fathers, this is really important for you too. But we are going to be talking about the biases that surround this, how you'll make your announcement, the fear of the unknown that you are certainly having. But first, we're going to start with just a review of where we've been before we get to where we're going today. And Elizabeth, how great has this been? It's been phenomenal. We've had a best time. We really enjoy not only when we kicked off our relationship, we were talking about how to take control of your career. And then we realized that taking control of your career uh, has a lot to do with my life, right? And my life about uh, decisions I make between staying single, being married, and having kids. And parenting came up in, in immediately because it's really such an important topic. And so we want to start today with uh, a, a, the, this topic about announcing your, your, your pregnancy, right? I am having a baby with the following assumptions. And I we would like you to write down if you don't have them already. And, and we don't want to sound boastful or, but here's what we are for you. We want to support you. And so if you were to write down some of the things you need to start doing now for when, your life will be incredibly different. The experience is not going to be the same. It's going to be easier. So here are the assumptions Shannon and I have about where you are. You have been actively expressing your desire to stay in the company. To speak about, I love it here, I'm assuming you do, I see myself here, that people from the very beginning of your, of your professional endeavor, people can listen and hear commitment. That's key. What are your thoughts about that, Shannon? The commitment absolutely is key. And I think there is that, that kind of grace period, I'll call it, uh -huh. when you first know you're pregnant before you've told anybody else. Maybe you've told a few family members. And that if that's the first time you've started expressing your commitment to the company, that's perfectly fine. That's an acceptable time. But you definitely have to say, I enjoy being here. This is the place for me. And let it sink in so that people can take it even subconsciously. Yeah, and, and, and we, what we invite you to do is do this ahead of time. It's almost like a marathon. You don't just go and show up for the marathon. You run and you run and you run and you run for the day. And what Shannon and I are telling you is all these things happen at an optimum impact when I've been working my way through it. So speak up and say, I like it. I like it. I like to be here. Uh, make sure that when you are with your mentors and your sponsors, that you're talking about your aspirations. Uh, your mentors and sponsors are people who speak about you as well on your behalf. And the more you create that sense of commitment and with your inside circle, those are your bodyguards. Those are the ones who will in a meeting, in your absence, say, oh, we can count on her. She is someone that's here for the long haul. Have you had that um, experience, Shannon, when you've had your mentors and your sponsors around you? Have they been useful that way? That is such a good point. And I want to remind anybody who doesn't know about the mentor and sponsor concept to head back to our career series, which is captured on YouTube and, and both of our Facebook pages. We talked a lot about how to gain your own personal board, how to get those people that are really ready to be there for you and, and really help represent you when you're not around, when you're not in the room. And those people are definitely the ones I can tell you when I was gone, I had an excellent sponsor, my old boss, Bob, 
who during the time of an acquisition, because I had my baby on the day my company was acquired. Which there we go. The very tenuous. Oh, the worst. But Bob did such a good job of saying, hey, here's what she's capable of. Here's what she can do. And he represented me in my absence. And I did not forget that. And so when I had people underneath me who were out on their maternity leaves, I did the same for them to say, here's what they're capable of. Let's not forget about them because I know they're coming back. Exactly. And, and so that is absolutely critical. Do you have a strong brand and do you have a corporate presence? So if you have a brand and a presence in your organization, people associate you with certain attributes and people know the value you bring. And when those two things happen, again, it's almost an insurance against misrepresentation, miscommunication, um, or assumptions that are not true to you. If people associate me consistently with a strong brand and strong presence, I'm in a very good place to state my claim and be taken in this moment, a special moment, in which I should be so joyful, and everybody around me as well, exactly for who I am, an excellent professional who's expecting a baby. Does that make sense, Shannon? It makes perfect sense, and I'm so glad that you reminded everybody that you need to keep telling yourself, I am a professional. I am good at what I do. And just because I'm taking on a new role in my personal life does not mean that my role in my professional life is going to change. Right. It, it, you know, it, it will be modified, uh, but it's not going to, you know, your, your, your capacity to do the work you're doing most likely will be enhanced, but that's for another, another occasion. Um, all right, so one of the things you want to do is think through with your spouse or significant other the scenario that would be ideal for both of you. So this is a little bit of groundwork. A conversation with him or her or your significant other. You have to talk about who picks up the baby, where, you know, family members, where are they going to be able to help her friends? Um, who's going to be the one picking up baby if there is an issue with an emergency for a fever and we have to take him to the doctor? Uh, what are the different potential sources we have? How are you going to make sure we have a dependable babysitter? I'm going to tell you something. This seems like basic one-on-one -on -one due diligence. But the other day I had a conversation with a woman who runs a very important division for a multinational company here. And she was struggling with this woman who had just finished uh, re-entered from pregnancy. And what she described to me was the most chaotic, unraveled, uh, mind-boggling uh, scenario. She didn't have a dependable babysitter. She wasn't uh, sure whether she wanted to travel or not. She was going through um, hormonal issues. We're going to talk about those too. So it, you could tell that she had not spent time thinking through what is it that I need to put in place. And there will always be a couple of things that are off that we're going to have to improvise. But I can tell you, and Shannon, I'm sure, is going to share with you some of the things she's done, that if you... Give yourself time to brainstorm. 90% can get structured, or at least you can understand you have a schema of action, right? And then things start to flow, or even better than expected. What did you do, Karen, uh, Shannon, when you started the process? So uh, one of the things I want to tell all of our friends who are pregnant, first, congratulations. What an exciting time. Um, but second, so many people talk about your birth plan. 
what's going to happen the day of the birth in your hospital room. And that birth plan is nothing. Those hours you don't have control of, you can write the best laid plans. But the plan that I think we want to tell you to focus on is your child care plan. So think, and, and this is this is not romantic, but this is going to pay dividends when you've got a call from school saying, and, and this happened to me, we've got a gas leak in the building. You can't come today. There's a snow delay. You, you can't come, you know, what are you going to do with your kid during work? And that birth plan, that one day thing that you are not in control of, that doesn't matter. But your project management and backup plan, which is can I become friends with the neighbors and do a parent trade on the days that we get called off? Do I have a dependable aunt or a grandma or a parent or somebody that, that has flex time at work? And once you start making that list of people, you'll be surprised how many people you have who've got your back. But it's really challenging to find them at 6.30 in the morning, the day that you've got a meeting at 8 o'clock and just don't have a backup plan. Exactly. And, and so I think you're getting the drift that... This process is about preparedness. Preparing yourself and your persona to speak up to the moment. And the, the, the comments we made at the beginning are showing consistency in your desire to stay on. And now as we look at, okay, I'm gonna have my baby. Let's talk through logistics, right? Now, before you you speak to your boss. There is a couple of things you want to make sure you do thoroughly. You really have to spend time looking at your corporate benefits. And we are assuming that you did that before you interviewed and that whatever they were offering you was good enough for you. We have to tell you that part of what we mentioned to women and then now about negotiating a salary is we can always, if we don't get the number, ideal number, we can get more days. So just food for thought. Uh, what's the company policy? What are the benefits? Uh, what are the rights according to the state I live in? Uh, what about how is it that I uh, go over to HR and ask for more information, uh, ask them for um, you know, their observations about what is the best way to approach the process? And, and there's one thing that I really recommend you do for, for you to reach out to women who have going through the experience at your company. They're a great resource for you because they're going to do two things. They're going to tell you, this is what I did that worked and I would have done this differently. So I'm turning it now over to Shannon. Shannon, when you were preparing for your announcement, how is it that you went about getting the information you needed to know what to ask for? Such a good question. So I, I did have a project plan. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you or anybody that actually knows me. <laughs> oh, I'm constantly planning. I like things to be logical and in order. So I had a really good plan to say, you know, here's when I'll go out. Here's, here's the things that, that I need to take care of. These are the things I have to ensure through HR, through my benefits and, and you know, finding a daycare uh, because you got to do that sometimes before your baby's born, which is crazy. But there are so many things that you have to plan, but I think, you know, my, my best advice is put it in a Google document or something that you can share with your significant other or your primary caretaker, if that's, you know, a mom or an aunt or a neighbor, so that they can understand what plans you have in place for all of your contingencies. And um, I want to tell a story about um, one of my dear friends that I worked with, Monica, who went out on her... Uh, maternity leave and insurance didn't kick in the way it was supposed to. There was a trigger that was missed. So Monica spent so many of her first days as a mother where, you know, your body is crushed. Nobody tells you about oh, that. Uh -huh. <laughs> no 
nobody tells you it's so hard to go to the bathroom after you've had a baby, but walking stairs is hard. It's all hard. And so, you know, you've got this, these emotional and physical challenges. You're trying to bond with your new baby. And Monica spent six weeks on the phone trying to get her pay to come to her during her FMLA period. And so I would say in your plan, write down the name of your insurance provider, your HR person, the phone numbers, get that in order before you go so that you're not scrambling for that during the time that you really should be taking care of yourself and your brand new baby. Oh, uh, and we can't emphasize this enough. See, the reason why we wanted to finish up with this topic is because we wanted to really bring home the fact that if you prepare well, things will go 90% smoothly. The 10% is always there. If you don't, this is the one thing that could really not only derail you at work, but make your life really conflicted for some time. I mean, I've seen women uh, really uh, be challenged and, and be taken away from the joy of being a mother because they're in this uh, volcano. They're in this horrible place of just reacting to issues like insurance, uh, work, the baby crying, and I don't know why, and your body going crazy and many other things. So. If you take this information and start to digest it, I can assure you, and Shannon can too, things will be so much easier for you. And we want your life to be easier. That's why we're doing this. But anyway, uh, so uh, one thing that we want to uh, talk about is your, your meeting with your boss. And I put a little list here for me to make sure I don't forget anything. The first thing I want to tell you is don't tell anyone at work. Don't tell your best friend before you tell your boss. She will tell. The last thing you want is your boss to know from somebody else and not from you. Don't do that to yourself when you're ready. Your boss is the first person to know. And the question is, when is it a good time? Most women wait until the pregnancy is mature enough to know that you know, the odds are very high that it's going to be fine. The first five, six weeks, you sort of wait, but it's your call. Circumstances can be unique in your case. So good timing. It's really something you discuss with yourself, your spouse, and your doctor. Um, we always recommend you try to set up a meeting like this one in the afternoon. Uh, the day has pretty much gone by. It might be the last meeting, which is great if you can get that slot, because that way you don't, you're not, you know, you're not pressed against the next meeting coming up. Um, when you're walking or talking or Getting into that meeting, your demeanor needs to be one of confidence, of assuredness, uh, of pride, as if you've been going to any other meeting. You know, when you walk in through the door, it's you with all of your great stuff. Uh, don't walk in apologetic and, you know, all, no, no. Uh, walk in just like in any other meeting, or maybe a, a very special meeting. Here we go, right? And when you're sharing this news, the, the, start with a matter of fact tone. Uh, John, I'm here because I wanna discuss with you the fact that we're having a baby, and I wanna share with you a, a, the plan of action I have to work through when I leave, what's gonna happen, and when I re-enter. Shannon, how did you go about setting up your big meeting? 
It was so similar to that, although I wish I had had access to you <laughs> prior to that time. Um, you know, <laughs> I waited until I was 18 weeks because I was what uh, doctors affectionately call advanced maternal age, which... <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as I'm out Clooney. Right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Um, so when I told my boss, I did exactly that. I, I said to him, hey, Bob, I've got some news for you. I am going to have a baby in July, and here is my plan. And I handed him what ended up being 80% exactly the same as the transition plan that I sent out about three weeks before I went out. And I talked about all the things that I did every day, who could cover them, what the impact was going to be. And so he could see very clearly, this business is going to run without me, but... I also wanted to make sure that he knew the business needed me to come back and I was planning on doing so. There you go. And so in that plan, again, here's the minimum list of things you have to include. When are you planning on leaving? Give and take. What is the time frame? Uh, who's going to cover for you? And then how is that you're going to make sure that the person or people or group covering for you will be able to do so. I'm gonna tell him or her. So I'm gonna have John take care of this. I'm gonna train John to take care of this. And I don't foresee any other issues because while I'm here now, he and I will work together on this issue. Also, you make sure you bring up what could be potential fires. The worst thing you wanna do is not tell him or her, listen, I'm aware that this, that, and the other thing are in the burner. And they could pop up and they could create, you know, some issues. I, I suggest, and then you can put suggestions as to how you would attack those. And then you express to him, I am considering re-entering the job and then you also express, this is in general, the way I see myself re-entering. For many uh, women, it's very beneficial to ask for a four day week, uh, work week. Many companies are giving them now. Um, but, so I want you to be creative and think, what will be my ideal re-entry to my job? And you can, that question should have been also answered with your HR people department so that you have an idea of what type of flexibility is available. So is there anything I forgot to include in this plan or at least this, this cheat sheet that you have to be preparing for? No, so I, I just really want to reiterate the, the idea of being creative. It's not something that I had thought about when I was coming back from having Halligan, but I have a great friend, Annalisa, who's had two babies. And when she's come back, she's come back on a plan where, you know, she works a few days a week, uh, shorter days, and the company loves it because they always missed her absence. And she loves it because she gets to ease herself back into, you know, being a working mother. And so I would really encourage everybody to think about that because you know, I didn't think about that. And I think it's so great. I think it's such a really nice way to say, here's how I'd like to re-enter and it's good for everyone. And let me tell you, I had the opportunity to be in Cleveland with a multinational company at the end of the year. And it was a woman's initiative that I was invited to speak at. And the most senior woman in the room during our lunch before the event was talking about pregnancy. We had two pregnant women in the room. And she said, one of the things I wanna recommend to the two of you, and it's something that I feel we, top management, don't do enough, is tell you that you don't have to uh, look at this as a liability and that, you know, to put yourself in a place to say, I'll be back in two weeks, it's, it's not something that makes sense to us. I wanna segue a little bit to tell you something. How you express what's important to you in life, the people you work with, your supervisor, your peers, speaks a lot about your brand and your presence and who you are. What are you, are, what are you made out of, right? 
And we have to speak to our convictions and we have to speak to what we believe in and we have to do it with certainty and we have to do it as a matter of fact thing and we don't blink. We just press it. And so when we say, I want to have this opportunity, we should do it just with the same tone of voice as when we said, you know, I'm really thrilled to start this project. It is quite different in terms of your life's experiences. But I think what you're getting from us is that when you take this moment and you, and you put your energy and your conviction behind it, people respect you for that. So sometimes people say, oh, if I come back in two weeks, they're going to really think I'm, I'm committed. And I can tell you that many executives will think, hmm, does she have her priorities in place? Right? Does that make sense? Shannon, what do you think about that? I think that makes perfect sense. Um, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you another story about when I was trying to re-enter. And, and again, having Halligan on the same day my company was acquired really threw me for a loop. And there was a sales meeting that was happening three weeks after I had her. And I called Bob and I said, Bob, I have to go to this meeting. I need to meet these people. I have to understand what's going on. And he said to me, absolutely not. You're not going to this meeting. <laughs> and um, I was glad that he acted as the voice of reason and um, said to me, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But he knew full well that I was intending on coming back. I had told him this is how I want to reenter. I don't want you to do anything different with my job. I want to keep pushing forward. And so we had such good communication prior to that, that when I tried to act a little crazy, he said, that's uh -oh. the way it's going to go. <laughs> and you know, we don't always have Bob's. We don't always have uh, the woman I met uh, in Cleveland. So we have to be smart. We have to be our best advocates. We have to be our, our guards and take care of the things who are they're really important. Now, when you're talking to your boss and you've given him the little plan that we've discussed in uh, the, the project management template that Shannon prepared, there's one piece of conversation that needs to be done and brought up to discussion. And that is the bias around, will she be here? And so, I, we recommend that you, you just say it, you know, listen, John, I know, and you know, that there is an association made of women that have their baby as if we're not going to be as committed, dedicated, um, ambitious about our work. And I want to have a conversation about that with you now. I want to let you know that I'm, I'm in this for a long haul. I want to let you know that I really love my work. I know I will need many times, in many little different moments, a little bit of flexibility because it's not going to be a lot. But it's just going to be short-lived. Uh, maybe two years, maybe three. Maybe I don't. Maybe things work because there are many circumstances in which emergencies are very few. I've known of a lot of people who have really had and be fortunate not to have a lot of, you know, issues. Um, you want to also, including that conversation with your supervisor, your boss, not only discussion of the elephant in the room, but that you have to have these conversations with your mentors and your sponsors, that they are aware and that they have given you some ideas which you can share with him, that you want to make sure that he or she understands that the assumption is there, but that you're bringing up the conversation because you want to demystify the assumption as it pertains to you. I, you, you, can, you know, I don't speak for other women, but for me, 
this is part of my life. My pie is this big, a pie that's broken into professional, personal, community, other. And all of that is me. And without one part, there's something about me that's not complete. And so I want you to know unequivocally that being an engineer is very important to keep me in balance. Does that make sense, Shannon? I think it's perfect. And uh, I would say to all of our expectant and new mamas who are re-entering the workforce, rewind this video and write down verbatim what Elizabeth just said, because it's a really good conversation to have. And a, and a lot of workplaces are moving away from this annual review so that you can have these more frequent touch points with your boss. And this is a great conversation to have pregnant or not. Yes. It's really, really important for you to address it and say, hey, look, you might be wondering if I'm going to be dedicated when I come back. And I'm telling you right now, I am. And, and the, the one thing that you can say that's going to be very realistic and he or she would know is there might be things that come up, but I'll take care of those. And if we work together, it's done. Because 99% of every issue that we run into in this category is really about a little bit of a break. And typically around time. That's, that's really all it, it requires. Now, the last part of this is you've had your baby, you're coming back. One of the things I recommend, when I was in, when I'm working in Prague, one of the problems in, in the Czech Republic for women, I guess it's a good problem, is that they have three years of maternity leave. And that's a long time. <laughs> You know, three, it, they, they, their, their position is kept. Uh, and as you can imagine, three years in a company, any company, but a global company is a life. It's permutations of version one, two, three, four, or five for the company. Anyway, so one of the issues that I had to discuss, and the HR person, a wise man, said to me, Elizabeth, my concern is they're plateauing because they left three years out, they disconnect. When they come back, it's like they're entering a new job. He was absolutely right. So what we decided to do was to, and this is on their voluntary uh, time, they have to want to, legally they have three years, to suggest to them, keep in touch. And that's not in, you're going to call into a conversation, no, or a conference call. I'm not saying that. Um, is there one of your um, people that you supervise or a peer that you can just touch a little bit, half an hour, because you're going to need those breaks too. After a while, changing diapers and feeding a baby gets like really, ah, uh, and we just need to <laughs> know to do something different. But anyway, uh, how is it going? Anything that I should be aware of? So you're not walking into an environment that's just going to make you surprised or intimidated or, you know, completely new to you because things changed in companies now from one day to the other. So your re-entry Again, you think it through, and it's your choice. Some women say, you know what, I'm going to disconnect for the next 12 weeks or whatever. Uh, but that's a possibility that you can take on, and I'm not suggesting more than 30 minutes, just a little bit. Or maybe it could be an email that people send you and you can read so that you're not walking back to a big unknown. Uh, Shannon, what did you do? Well, I, um, I had regular conversations with some of the people that I worked with. I actually took Halligan to the office and had lunch with everybody. So they got to meet her, which was really nice. And I got to kind of hear what was happening. And, you know, I think it's a little different in America than it is in other places. We're not gone as long, but I think 
if you choose to take a longer break, if you choose to take some time off and then you're re-entering, it's good for you to keep up with your industry. So keep up, you know, by reading, watching videos, see what's happening on LinkedIn and just keeping yourself tuned into changes in your company and the industry as well. And, and then it will keep, it will keep tackling your brain because Elizabeth, you hit the nail on the head. At least, at least it's my nail changing diapers and feeding and burping a baby that can get very monotonous. So it's it, good to yeah. keep that really elastic. It can, um, it gets to a moment in, in your day and your week in which you're just hungry for a normal human interaction. Because you also start to talk like to your baby conversation, vocabulary, so it's gaga gaga and boo 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 boo. And so anyway, uh, we're digressing a little bit. But you'll know what we're talking about soon. Now, for the re-entry, one thing that I want to tell you, and this is critical, don't try to be superwoman and be aware of how your body is feeling. Uh, hormones are part of our body. And when we have babies, some women, like Kate, the princess in the UK, go about it in a supernatural way. And she can step out after six hours of having a baby looking like a princess. And then you say, oh my God, there we are, right? We're, how can that happen? Well, that's Kate. The rest of us uh, don't go through that. And so I, one of the things that I want you to emphasize before we go, stay tuned to how you feel. Some women get very anxious. Some have a little bit of depression. Don't feel afraid of it. You talk to your doctor. There are many things to do. The important thing is to take care of yourself. If you push yourself and you bring all that cocktail, that chemical cocktail to work, you're going to look precisely that. Unsettled, maybe incongruent. You're here, but not here. Uh, and so be realistic. Give yourself time to re-enter. Shannon, what happened to you? I had postpartum blues with the first one. I didn't have it with the second one. And with the first one, it lasts around one month. Some people don't have them. I have experienced both, one and none. I did um, and until I went back to work. <laughs> and um, you know, I had some good friends who recognized it and said, all right, pack your baby up. It's time we're going out to lunch or I'm coming over and I'm bringing lunch to you. And for for that, I will be eternally grateful. And I would say, take the help that your friends are offering you. They can see some things that you can't necessarily see. Um, it will help you get back in the right frame of mind. And for me, my biggest struggle was getting myself and that baby ready in the morning, getting her ready, you know, with the unexpected, I'd have her all dressed and then I'd have to change her diaper again. And then trying to get myself ready was a challenge. So I found it was best for me to pick out both of our outfits the night before. That shaved some time and some decision out of the morning routine. And you know, I think that morning routine really was my biggest struggle. It was the most unpredictable. It was the time where I felt the most alone. Um, but finding little things like that, choosing our outfits the night before really was helpful for me. Yeah, it is going to, and we don't want to sound, even though it's true, we don't want to sound that this is going to be, you know, disturbing the rest of your life in a negative way, or uh, this is going to be shifting your life forever. But it is in a good way, in so many ways, that if we take this, again, they're discrete moments. So after I had my baby, it's not going to last forever. If you take care of yourself, now if you push it, you are playing with fire not only for your own well-being, for the baby's well-being, for your marriage. So take it easy. Superwoman um, is not an option. And let her be, you know, the comic book, you know, elusive, fantastic thing. 
it's so wonderful to be human and to be vulnerable and not to be perfect. I can't emphasize that enough. So imperfection is good. Now, and, and, and accepting that that's who we are. To close in the context of reentry, I want to emphasize again that the way you go about having this conversation tells the world a lot about you. Not apologetic. This is part of my life. I have a plan. I'm astute enough to know that I haven't let, you know, allowed for the, this to be the last minute thing. I am aware that preparation needed to happen and I'm going to do this in a thoughtful way. And when you do that, you gain respect and admiration for people. So this is a moment that is a transcendental moment. You are going to be privileged enough to bring a human being to, to, to you know, live in the, even our planet and, and he or she will be under your care. And what an, a tremendous opportunity. And that said, um, play the part with power, with confidence, with a deep sense of responsibility for that baby and for your company. Um, Shannon, how did you feel when you had that conversation with your boss? You know, my sister had a baby before I did and she said to me one time, having a baby, being a mother makes me a better employee because mm. I have to be very thoughtful about how I segment my time, where I focus my energies. And, and I'll never forget her saying that to me. And I can remember very specifically wanting to express that same thing to my boss. You know, I'm not gonna change who I am at work because I'm now a mother. In fact, I probably will be better because I'm gonna have to manage myself even more tightly so that I can continue to delight you with the things that I can add to the workplace. And so I think, you're absolutely right. This is such an exciting time. Again, congratulations to all of you mamas. What a fun time. Don't let the frenetic pace of what's going on in your own mind stop you from enjoying every single minute of this time. That is going to pass so quickly, right, Elizabeth? Well, mine, 32 and 38, uh, married, happily married. Um, and I just remember... I was actually remembering this the other day, the day I had them, right? And so it's just like so clear in my mind. Um, I, I think that the more today, the more we're able to really educate people. And as we have conversations again with friends and peers at work, how do we decide to speak about family, about parenting, it's very important. I don't want to leave today, and Shannon and I thought about this before, without throwing at you the idea of starting to think about um, how, what parenting means to you. We want to close with helping you start to think about, you know, the challenge that we have to propose against what will be the traditional family institution of the 50s. Many of the things came out of that, but it's not the 50s anymore, right? Things have changed. And you and I, Shannon, we all have the opportunity to speak about what we think parenting is about, how we see parenting. For those of you who want to have a spouse that's going to stay at home, because he, in this case, a male spouse that wants to stay at home, um, feels not only that it's the right thing to do for you, but he wants to. He wants to. And so, and that's a good thing. So as we close, we want to plan to see. And I want you to think about what would be the, your vision statement, what would be the 
where you express to people how you see family, parenting, and, and making the social nucleus relevant to you and the people around you. Shannon, your turn. <laughs> you know, I, I think for me, the, the thing that I really did not think enough about because I spent so much time planning was how I would feel. I spent so much time on the left brain and forgetting about the right brain, you know, my, my heart and my emotions and really what the hormones were doing to my emotions. Yeah. And so I just want to reiterate, find somebody to talk to your doctor, your spouse, your friend, and, and don't, don't ask yourself, you know, is it okay for me to be feeling these things? It's okay for you to be feeling these things. Yeah. Talk about them with somebody and, you know, do the best that you can to enjoy this time and this transition and your metamorphosis into becoming a mother. It's, it's really a cool time for some of you like me, it will only happen one time. So you should enjoy it. Yeah, and, and again, you have a right to claim the type of family unit you and your significant other are choosing to have. Nothing should be dictating a model that doesn't work for you. That doesn't mean that we go crazy in terms of maybe some of the things that that, uh, you know, in terms of how do we coexist with the school system? And, and even so, at that level, there are many options for you, right? So look around, think it through, make it clear to your inner circle who you are, who you want to be known as a parent and go for it and claim it to be true and allow that idea, that new way of looking at parenting, if it's going to be new, right? Uh, to take a life of its own and enjoy the process. We've really enjoyed being with you during this period. We hope uh, we've been of service to you. It's been our interest and our desire to be of service. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Shannon, it's been great having this opportunity to work with you on these two series. And we're going to be working on more, but this has been fun. It's been even better for me. Um, the feedback has been amazing. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for giving of your time and yourself and, and bringing us you know, both of these series for free. The first one, which was on how do I manage my career and stay true to myself. You can find those on our YouTube channel, Shannon J. Gregg MBA or Elizabeth Rodriguez and Associates LLC. Um, we've got them also posted on our Facebook groups. If you missed any of the preceding meetings on parenting, they're all posted for you as well. There's some yeah. really great tips that Elizabeth has given. She usually charges big dollars for these. So we are so fortunate that you have chosen to share your tips with so many of us for free. Elizabeth is also available on LinkedIn. You can find her there. Um, she does do coaching. She's got a really cool online course that she's kicking off that is really, really exciting. And one of the things she does that I absolutely love is she sends out a Monday morning reset, which is a short email that you get um, ready for your Monday morning that says, here's something you need to be thinking of. And she gives you a word of the week to focus on. And I find it to be very inspirational. You should definitely sign up for it. You will love it. And to all of you brand new expectant parents, I say congratulations, enjoy the ride. It is always going to be worth it, even in the moments it is not fun. Yes, yes, even when it gets dark. So with that, we leave you, Shannon. It's been a pleasure. You're, you're a very classy lady. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. See you soon.